Okay there guys, hi there, uh, Stu Hawk123, um, going to do the demo with um, a piece of video that um, my friend uh, from the state sent me, here's his um, Facebook web page, uh, Astrophotography with a 10 inch Dubsonian telescope. Um, he lives in uh, San Francisco, um, if you've ever been there. I haven't, but um, the light pollution um, is quite bad, to say the least. Um, as my friend has told me uh, how bad it can be over there with uh, the freeway nearby and uh, some shopping malls. Fortunately, uh, clear skies. Um, in Scotland, we uh, we have darker sky, slightly darker anyway, uh, especially when we move away from the central belt area, um, particularly uh, north north from the central belt is particularly dark. Um, however, um, if you check out his web page, uh, you'll see some of the uh, images he has collected and uh, some of the methods he uses. Um, on some of his, some of his endeavours, um, pretty spectacular. Um, even just worth a visit uh, to have a look through. Uh, maybe maybe give you some pointers if you're just starting out in uh, astrophotography. Um, some people I've um, spoken to over the past few uh, months um, have been experimenting with mobile phones, different cameras, di uh, digital SLRs. Um, etc. etc. Uh, through even camcorders, um, CCD um, cameras, etc. etc. And varying results come from from each really. Um, but this is to show you um, the video that he collected um, of Saturn. Now you can visit his webpage and he'll show you um, what he's using. There's a scope, very similar to mine, um, except mine's is a, a solid tube. Um, I have mine flocked um, through the, the tube. Um, I also have my primary and secondary mirror um, coated with a, a helix coating um, which basically just increases the uh, spectrum of light being received in the mirror um, and it increases it quite a lot to be perfectly honest. Um, I also have a cooling fan um, at the rear of the telescope um, which cools the primary mirror down uh, to the uh, ambient temperature of outside. Um, if you leave your scope uh, sitting outside for a while before you start viewing, uh, this will give the primary mirror a chance to climatise and uh, your viewing will be a lot sharper uh, in detail and contrast. Now. Without further ado, we shall start the demo. Now, a lot of people were using uh, images they'd collected um, from mobile phones, cameras, webcams, etc, etc. Now, this one's from a Canon PowerShot, a 13 second clip, um, <coughs> excuse me, at 21.1 megabytes per second. Now it's a dot mov, so Registax won't see that, but the auto stacker program does, and I've experimented um, just the past sort of 24 hours um, doing that, and these were the results. I'll explain these as uh, the demo carries on. These images here down the bottom, uh, these were the ones that were produced from uh, Registax 6. Uh, none of the uh, images have uh, been altered in uh, Photoshop as of yet. Um, just to show you the video, uh, here we have Saturn uh, travelling through the field of view until it disappears. Um, now, one thing to note is these frames uh, where Saturn is actually heading out um, will also be incorporated into the stacking uh, program that you're using. So if you're using 
um, Registax 6 uh, cut out the frames where the image starts to degrade uh, as you don't want a frame with half the image missing or blurred for example um, so when I did mine I painstakingly went through um, almost two gigabyte of data with um, over a thousand odd frames sifting through um, to get what I needed to get my picture and I had uh, perfectly clear skies and perfect atmospheric conditions uh, when I did it. Um, I converted the MOV file to um, AVIs and at different compression ratios. Uh, this one is 6.3 megabytes um, which is an AVI and this one is 928 megabytes in size. Um, the reason for the difference, um, now when you're converting to um, .mov or mp4 or whatever format you need to convert to to get an AVI uh, file for Registax, um, you can convert it through any video converter uh, but it will compress uh, the, the data. Um, I like to use a program called EM Total Video Converter, uh, which allows you to um, basically change the um, the codecs that are getting used within the settings, um, which I can change to uh, raw video, and I prefer to do that and increase the frames and so on and so on. This will allow the compiling software to pick more frames and more data um, so that you get a better final image um, in, a, in, an honesty, in all honesty. Um, I'm going to show you um, just with this small one how we ended up with these images and I'll just display them beforehand and then show you the end results at the same time as we finish the demo. Um, here was one from, these are all, these all, all of these images, sorry, are uh, from Registax um, using the components and uh, the auto features. This one is an, an auto uh, art, uh, red, green, blue balance uh, image um, of the final stack. Um, one a little later this one didn't have any drizzle. The one previous uh, was a, a times three drizzle, I think. Um, went a little brighter, a little darker, but you can see the banding a little bit better. Uh, the Cassini rings. This one, um, I love, to be honest. The colours in it are amazing. If you take a step back and have a look at that, that's it's, it's quite extraordinary looking. Uh, the detail and the banding is, is, is great. Um, but it doesn't look um, how you would look at it through the, the telescope. So a lot of people say that it doesn't look real, it's, that's fake and so forth and so forth. Rubbish. Uh, it's uh, how you want it to look like, it's what's important. Um, here's another one, slightly offset angle. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, we should just open up Registax 6 and we're going to direct uh, Registax 6 to the um, small AVI file at 6 megabyte um, just to show that it does load and with the 928 megabyte uh, it will also load um, and it will process as well but to keep this video just short um, I'm just going to open up the smaller one Now, here we have the, the image loaded. Now, the first thing that you want to be doing is looking for to set alignment points. This is where the the alignment points for the, the, the base of the image will be based upon. Um, so, we want to look through the frames. And if you move the little slider along at the bottom here, you can pick out the frame just sort of stands out to me. 
and that one looks pretty good and you can click on where you feel is relevant to the alignment areas now I'm going to choose some obvious features corners the banding on the Cassini ring just on the outside of the actual sphere of Saturn and one or two on the outer edge of the rings and that one is just a little out so we can right click and remove that that looks fine and I've also set it to the best frames 50 of now I said earlier on um, about removing the frames that you we don't want now we know that in frame 313 there is a uh, no image so we don't want that so we'll untick it and we'll untick the ones that we don't want now we'll just scroll up and remove them as we see fit and as you can see on the left you can start to see Saturn coming back into view as you reverse through the frames now I'm going to go ahead now and just remove about 100 frames uh, till we get to about 210 or so okay so I've um, I've removed uh, the, the unwanted frames so if I just click here and I'll show you why if I scroll down a little I go with three or seven. Say, there's nothing in the image, so we don't want that frame. So it's uh, pretty pointless having it there. Um, so we're just going to jump back to frame one, and we can see the image. I'll just take off the frame list now. Uh, here we go. So when we are doing the alignment, um, the alignment. If you highlight it, process to start the alignment. But what is the alignment? Well, the alignment is where all the frames will be stacked upon. Uh, the the first base image if you like um, you can set the the number of alignment points or you can align by center of gravity depending on um, if the the object is stationary for example if you're doing a short movie of the moon um, uh, using the center of gravity can help with that um, and refocus it back into the center um, with a drifting image um, f focus on the area that you want to be aligned and not the entire area as it will take in the drift uh, into consideration or rather not take it into consideration and it will give you a big blurry blurry output um, so we're just going to go ahead and align this um, as you can see it's working along here um, <coughs> from the original 313 um, when I did mine um, I had over 1,500 frames to sift through and out of that I used about 80 to 100 um, to create my image and the uh, atmospheric conditions were I would say about 99% um, in favour of a, a, a good shot and I was really pleased at the outcome <coughs> and <coughs> Uh, you, may, you may feel that uh, or think that the program has crashed um, but trust me it hasn't it's still working away and using quite a lot of the CPU so if you have a slower computer with um, just a dual core or, or, or that uh, please be aware that this can take some time to do so leave it leave it alone go, go watch um, the news uh, make a coffee um, whatever, whatever, and uh, here we go. Here's the uh, final stack, or rather the the, the uh, alignment um, to the center, and we're going to limit that. Now the limit um, refers to this section down here, limit setup. Now we have set well the setting that uh, was set when I opened it by default was best frames percentage. Now that's just going to use fifty percent of the best frames so if it finds a hundred great frames 
out of the 159, um, it will stack only 50% of them. So it's, uh, it's going to be a guessing game here. So um, we could tell it to stack the best 10 frames. Um, or we could increase that to say 35 or whatever takes your fancy, whatever you think might be the best for you. But I'm going to leave it on the best, say, uh, I'm thinking of around about 30. Now you'll notice that the slider moves when you drop down the limit. And this is basically because it can all it can't load any of the the frames after here because we're limit it, limiting it to only thirty, which is the best ones. And um we'll click the limit button. And I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm just going to press the stack button and it'll go through all the frames that we told it to and it's going to use 95 to search through to stack. Just to point out whilst um, that's actually stacking, if I bring up my uh, task manager here on the right hand side you'll see the, the um, not responding um, has come up. Sometimes you will see this under ready stacks. It doesn't mean that it's not responding um, as it could be still processing in the background. It just means it's not responding to any user input. So leave it alone. Don't close it. Um, you may be closing it unnecessarily and nine times out of ten you probably will. However, here is the final stacked image um, and it's looking pretty great already and we haven't even went into uh, wavelets yet which I'll just go through but I won't actually um, teeter about too much in here from the images that we got here we just move this slightly out of the way um, you'll notice that I've got some of them titled uh, auto RGB totally remastered um, finished and so forth uh, now if I hit the RGB balance uh, on this you know, you'll notice that the RGB wavelengths are slightly out of alignment. If you hit the auto balance, it will try to find the best setting basically to display the image um, in its true colour by bringing them into alignment. And this is what brings in this blue purple colour, um, which does actually emanate from uh, the rings, I believe. Um, we reset just for the time being. Uh, this can just create different colours. The RGB align as well can also be used and you can estimate that uh, automatically or if you have a, a slight yellow um, edging on the ring that doesn't look as if it's supposed to be there, you can change the position um, of the red and blue. Uh, sorry, if you have a red or blue banding around that doesn't look as if it's supposed to be there, you can move that up and down um, to, ch to just get rid of it uh, if it doesn't look as if it's supposed to be there um, but be careful, 9 times out of 10 you'll be moving um, for colour frequencies that you don't want to So, but there's just another option in here um, I'll just let that finish and here's the finished RGB alignment um, the wavelets can be done either using uh, two filters here, we have the default and the Gaussian um, I would prefer to use this as you can change the denoise as you change the wavelet and sharpen it um, just so that you can see uh, what it actually does um, I'll bring up the full image or a magnified view if you like of the image and if I just move these along you'll see what it does and it will do all. Now that's the original and after the um, calculations have been done for the wavelets I'll apply them to the layers and there we can see 
what it's actually done. The detail's a lot sharper now. Now we could actually go into the brightness and change the contrast and brightness area over here, which could bring it a little brighter. But it would depend on really how how you see what you want to see. Twenty-five, fifty, one hundred percent. That looks pretty good. Pretty awesome. Absolutely superb image there, and uh, that's not even in through Photoshop yet. But that's a uh, that's basically how Registax uh, picks out your frames. You can save it in multiple formats here or file types rather. Uh, don't be confused by the codexes again. Uh, we have uh, bitmap, JPEG, uh, fit file, TIFF, and PNG, which is uh, all can be opened up in uh, Photoshop. Um, but if you're using uh, other software, photo editing software, you may want to use it as a JPEG, um, as JPEG is probably the most uniform um, file type for any other programs that you may be using. Um, if you're setting it to um, a FIT file you may find difficulty in trying to open it as your software may not recognize that file type so please be aware of that as you as you save your files. Now I'm going to cancel this down, I'm not going to save anything as um, I've got some uh, ones I did earlier um, that I would, or rather that you've already seen now um, from this uh, original .mov file. Now, the auto stack art uh, 2.2.0.16 um, FFmpeg um, is pretty ace. Now, this is the alpha version. Um, on the left here we have the sort of button panel control um, window and on the right hand side we have the viewing of the video. Um, I'm just going to move this off so we can see this a little more clearly. Um, firstly we want to um, put the video in that we're going to be using. Um, so we're just going to drag and drop that right in the center. doesn't really matter, it will take it from wherever. And on the video I'm just going to scroll along to the, now I know that the Saturn's up the top right and here we have Saturn in the image. Now similar to uh, Registax we can move and sift through the frames and you can notice a massive difference between this and Registax, this amplifies it so you can see uh, much more detail uh, throughout, right through to the frames where it disappears. Now, whilst I was previously um, processing this video, um, I did notice um, a little phenomenon just off to the left as I was flicking through the... And there she is. We do actually capture one of the moons sliding in through the frame. across the screen. Now we didn't even notice that in Registax. Um, I didn't even notice it in VLC. Um, the only way we did notice it was through this um, but again it was on the um, file that was totally uncompressed. Um, the compressed file we couldn't see it at all. Um, so just that we know if you were looking to catch the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the moons of Saturn, um, pretty nifty way of doing it is through that uh, method by uncompressing it. Um, so to get on with uh, Auto Stacker, we'll go back to uh, Saturn here. Now if you do a, a, an analyse an, or, or an, an analyse We'll spit that out properly. If you do a, an analyze stage of the video, 
it will help in showing you the best frames by placing a gritty object. I'll just I'll just click the button and, and let it load through it. You can see the process skipping through here. Now it gives you this quality graph. Now we can see this green line determining the quality range and the light grey going through in the background till it drops off. This drop off is clearly where um, the frames of Saturn disappear and just to show you that round about here it starts to just totally drop right off the scale now obviously these are going to be frames that we are not going to be needing nor wanting however if you look at the the, the, the grey line this shows you peaks now these small peaks correspond with a sharper image on screen compared to one that has dipped. For example, we'll just skip along back to this one. Down here. Uh, this corner has been sort of defuzzed and the ring is barely visible, but on the right hand side it's a little clearer. Um, what we want to do to set the alignment points um, on it is again find a, a frame that really stands out. Um, I'm going to choose one that I can see the ring quite clearly on from here or the way around. That looks pretty good to me. I can see some of the detail coming through from the uh, banding on the surface. I'm going to save the file as a PNG. Um, we've already uh, told the, um, the the settings to take this number of stacks so every three frames it will stack it and then every five, ten and twenty and the percentage is fifty so out of five it will do probably two point five but will it do two point five? I don't think so, it will probably do two or possibly three um, so frames percentage to stack um, I'm going to actually tell it to do 30 just to see the, the difference is and we're also going to have a, a sharpened uh, blend in about 50% now it's, I've got here save output stacks and folders as you can see they're already here now I'm going to put a prefix in that so that we know which ones it is and I'm just going to call it demo now, earlier we had the HQ Refine, which is just basically a high quality refinement. And it'll make the edges, uh, the, sorry, the darker areas a lot darker, and it will make the contrast stand out a lot more. Drizzle effect, same in Reggie Stacks. Um, you can blow up the image a little. Um, having 3.0 um, will require some heavy uh, hardware. Uh, I.e. more RAM than 8 gig um, as I am that's what I'm running at the moment on this machine and um, it's crashed every time because it runs out of memory trying this so I'm going to have that off um, I'm actually going to have this off as well because it does take a little bit more time but it will do it uh, whilst if you're experimenting yourself and you're using the HQ Refine it is well worth it but bear in mind if you have a slower computer it will take a long time for these ones, it took over an hour and a half with the HQ Refine on. Um, so, back to the uh, the video um, on the alignment points. You can manually draw, um, or you can get it to drop in its own by just hitting the placements. Um, minimum brightness to automatically set. You can set a certain brightness for it to pick them up, um, and then place them in the grid. Now it's put in 97. Uh, alignment points. Now that could take a long time to process that and you'll possibly find out that it's actually took the moon as well and this can be a little bit of an issue as well because the target that we want is here. So I chose to manually draw the um,
the alignment point, sorry. Um, so I'll select them. And bear with me a second, I won't actually manually draw them, but I will just pop them in. Try and pick areas that, you know, stand out corners and the sharper areas I'm quite happy with that so once you've done the selection of the um, the alignment points it will allow you now to stack and that's what we're going to go ahead and do now yeah so bear in mind that the, uh, the video can take quite a while uh, for to to process as you can see here it's processing away in the background now sometimes um, as I explained earlier you might see this non responding not responding message uh, in the status within your task manager if you feel that it, um, it's crashed out uh, trust me if um, if your CPU uh, percentage is moving the likelihood that it is still processing if that became uh, zero um, and zero, then most likelihood it's crashed um, as it can no longer process the data. Um, so we're just going to leave that as is until it's completely finished. Okay, so it's just about finished now. Um, it's just adding the um, the new uh, stacked images to the folders. Now, if you haven't previously used this. Um, it will make the folders up uh, for each stack pile um, that you're you're going to use. Um, and it's taken about ten minutes or so uh, to get to this point, um, and it's still you know finishing off its tasks. Um, <coughs> wait till it's completely finished, uh, and you have a green tick and all of these. Now here it just popped up a new one that we didn't previously have up here before um, so we're just going to drag that up here anyway and now it's finished now I'm going to close this down and I'll immediately open up that one now the files we knew we set uh, we saved as PNGs this one 7.62 and this one will probably be a little less now the reason that is is one will be the um, 30 frames and one will be the 50% uh, stack. Um, we'll just open it up um, with a uh, photo viewer and have a look at that. That's pretty awesome, that image. Um, a lot of detail in here uh, compared to the video. We'll switch to the other one and it's made it a little brighter and it's a little blurrier so we may want to use this one instead. However, we're going to look through the other ones that it did do. I'm just going to pop this folder over to the left so we don't get it confused with the, the, the stacks. Now, if I have that one here, this is the one we just did um, along with the images that it's just created as the folders were already created for it. Um, so this is the ones that we did earlier today, um, this has saved its TIFF and these ones as PNG. So we'll just have a look through them and we'll open them up again with uh, the photo viewer. And you'll notice that the, uh, the darker one um, was actually because the as I said earlier, the, um, the higher quality um, checkbox, um, that's what has the effect on it. Here's one that's a little brighter. And the rest look pretty much the same. But we can use that detail 
from each of uh, the video, uh, the, the stacked images, and we can combine them to give a more detailed image. And that was in that 50. If we look up, say, the 5, and we'll have a look through these and see what we got. Hmm. As you can see, that didn't go too well, that one. However, the ring is awesome itself. A lot of detail on the left hand side, but up here it's been a little corrupt. And that's a bit of a shame. We may go back through that to find out where the corrupted part comes from, but you can see the ring more detailed. And this colouring coming out on it now. Pretty spectacular. And here's an excellent one. Now, you'll notice the difference between, say, 3 frames and uh, 50. Um, you can select which one that you want to uh, edit. Now, there's obviously somewhere in the process where the top right and down here is misaligned. So that could be the alignment uh, points, but I'm not sure as the other ones seem to be okay, but it could be probably more likely. But that just shows you how the whole process is done. Let's have a look at the 20. Open with the viewer. That look, ooh, that looks a lot, lot nicer. Again, the um, top right and the bottom right here, just a little bit out. And we should, we could actually go back in and sort that by changing the um, the alignment areas slightly. Um, we've maybe missed that, but that is coming along absolutely lovely. So, that's the demo guys, um, just in fact, one more thing just before, um, if you have a, 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 a mob file um, and you can't be actually bothered going through any of that to get it, this uh, Microsoft Image Composite Editor, uh, you can drag the file straight in and if we click OK, it will analyse the video. Now it won't take a lot of frames out of this, um, this is really strict, this program for getting uh, your data perfect from the word go, really, um, and it will only stitch two or three frames together, it's, it's actually only picked two out of three here, but the image is absolutely brilliant, spectacular image here, and I'm just actually going to export that to the desktop. And you can see the two frames that it chose as being the best. And we're just going to discard that and we'll have a look at the image that looks pretty good just even for two seconds uh, the, the, the quality is quite outstanding on that um, so I hope this helped guys um, if you've got any questions uh, you can PM me um, on the forum or uh, through uh, YouTube. Um, so thanks again for watching. Thanks. Bye-bye.